from Salt Lake City. Please welcome Bobby Hall. Hey, what's up? How's it going? How you doing? It's so good to have you on. I mean, I, I feel you. like you've grown up overnight, Logic. With the shorter hair, you were a little, not a little kid, a young man. And now look at you, a dad and sharing your story. How does it feel? Uh, it's amazing. It's awesome. You know, um, I, I, I love hip hop and I love where I've come from. And I love that I've been able to kind of use this as a medium to just spread a positive message. And uh, yeah, also, I'm nervous. You know, being on TV is crazy. <laughs> so thank you for having me. I really and appreciate I'm it. I'm going to add to your nerves. It's live. So this is this is all going out right oh, now. Snap. Yeah. Oh, snap. So just don't say all those curse words. I was about I'm going to ask you to refrain no, on kidding. at least two. So listen, I got to <laughs> jump joking. in because I knew a lot of the race conversation that that surrounded you as an artist. And I did not know your whole story clearly until reading this memoir. When you wrote about your mother and you talk about th this notion of not being black enough, you say that racism was still coming from inside the house, that your mother who was white would use racial slurs regularly and then show you documentaries about Martin Luther King Jr. What was that yeah. like for you? I mean, I... Um yeah, I mean, well, first of all, in, in no way uh, d d do I mean to demonize my mother or yeah. anybody in my family. I'm simply just speaking my truth, you know. My mother, uh, she comes from, like, systemic racism. I mean, think about it. She loves brothers. All her children are with black men. I'm the whitest looking of the bunch. Um, so it, this is, like, deep-rooted in something when it comes to her own uh, abuse and things that she was going through as a child. So she's so it, it's more about her being a broken person, not this monster. And I, and I realize that now as a father and, and as a grown man, but dealing with these things, yeah, it was extremely difficult. But I think this, this, this book allowed me to uh, focus on forgiveness yeah. and kind of leaving all those memories and experiences on the page rather than holding them and you know, bringing them into my own uh, personal relationships. Right, and, and I get that when I was reading because your mother's had her own struggles to your point, and even your father, you talk about your relationship. But I was, I was intrigued truly by the idea that you have multiple siblings. Was it seven siblings? Eight now. Eight, eight, eight siblings. And you were, as you pointed out in your book, the fair skin, and you had clearly blue eyes. And later in life, this impacted your career. You wrote in your book that... Artists like J. Cole and Drake, who are also biracial, had an easier time navigating hip hop. You wrote, but then I came along with blue eyes and fair skin, and all of a sudden it's, well, how black are you, though? I mean, it was all around you from home and the abuse there, because I can't imagine a kid's mom calling them the N word. And then you go into hip hop, a passion, a love, and then they're like, well, you're not black enough. Yeah. You had to feel just unsettled all the time. Yeah, 100%. First of all, let me just say that hip-hop is a beautiful place, and hip-hop mm -hmm. was built on a positive message, and, you know, all the way from Grandmaster Flash and yeah. the Furious Five to Sugar Hill Gang to DJ Cool Irk to, <laughs> you know, incredible MCs that... <laughs> You're uh, winning over this New York crowd, and that, and absolutely... I'm just saying, yeah, it's the truth. It's true. We are in the home of hip-hop in New York City. Yeah, so when I think about you know, cats like J. Cole and Drake, that's their experience. They're amazing. They's, they've always yeah. been beyond kind to me. It was merely just a comparison to say, like, uh, kind of what this world does, and everybody wants you to fit in a certain box. And at the end of the day, it's like you can't stand in, uh, stand out and fit in at the same time. So I kind of went this my own route. You talk about finding your purpose in life, and, and a big moment for you came, um, of course, when you perform. Um, at the MTV Music Awards, VMAs, excuse me, 2017. In your book, you say, since the day I started rapping professionally, at, we at least once a year, I thought about quitting. And at a moment yeah. you thought about quitting, you describe this experience and this opportunity to really go viral globally when you had a song dedicated to all of the survivors and all of those who have thought about no longer, that life was no longer worth living and that they couldn't make it mm. through. And you performed that song. Um, you said it was incredible for you, but it also brought controversy. Yeah, it's it's funny 
like nobody is in the studio like yo we got a hit about suicide y'all this is going up in the club like nobody <laughs> no you know what i mean like it was it was only meant from a place of of love right. you know i i'd done this tour where um i actually got a tour bus and went from uh los angeles to new york city to visit my fans in their homes to play them uh an album that was unreleased, my second album. And, and a big thing that they they had said when I would surprise them and eat mm-hmm. with them and their families and hang out and play them this album early was like, oh, your music saved my life or, wow. you know, you saved my life or your message saved my life. And I'm like, what? Like, I wasn't even trying to do that. So could you imagine what it would be like if I did try to actually do that? And then I came up with the song that in many ways I dreaded because it's like method acting. Like I'm uh, like on the record, you know, it's kind of like Daniel Day-Lewis. Like I put myself into that place. I've been in that place and I know how that feels. So, you know, creating this record and doing it from a place of love and from my heart and then performing it on national television Mm -hmm. and it blows up in a way that I never thought would happen. It's not why I did it. It was crazy because then you become a like a household name and yeah. people know who you are and it's just it could be extremely difficult to kind of deal with somebody being like oh you're not you didn't make this song for the wrong reasons or you're not this enough or that enough or blah 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 and it's just a perpetuation. Well, what of the same I saw that, that night was someone who was saving lives. I mean, I think it was the first time in history that a show ended with the phone number for the suicide prevention mm-hmm. line. And that's what I saw, and that's what I believe many, many others saw. Afterwards, though, you indicated you wanted to retire at however years young you are, and now yeah. are you retired? Are you not? Where do things stand? Well, it's funny because like I bounced for a second, and then I was like, <laughs> "Oh man, you know, I love, I love." So the answer is no. Much. You have not retired. You are not trying to Michael Jordan us all day long with this. Yeah. You are, you are back. You're clearly in a studio ready to perform.